quick warning before we start. There is no official Tesla Pi phone pre-order or sales right now. This channel has only one official account and we will never DM you, ask for money, or send you payment links. If anyone claims they can offer early access or asks for a deposit, it's a scam. Protect your money. If there's ever official Pi phone news, we will post it only here on this channel. Now let's get into today's analysis. December 2025, Tesla Pi Phone, $199. The question isn't if it's real. The question is, can it actually fix the three things you hate most about smartphones? Your battery dies faster every year, you're forced to upgrade every two or three years, and your internet bill never goes down. If Tesla is serious, they're attacking all three directly. In just a few minutes, I'm breaking down four layers, battery, Starlink inside your home, apps, and security against scams. One detail will either make this a game changer or the biggest clickbait of the decade. Full transparency, Tesla hasn't confirmed this phone exists. This is technical analysis of what's feasible and what it means for you. If you want the full breakdown, make sure you're subscribed and notifications are turned on. The Power Revolution – Why Tesla's Battery Changes Everything If you hear Pi Phone and think about cameras first, you're looking in the wrong direction. Tesla only has one real advantage over Apple and Samsung – power and energy management. They've been building battery systems for 15 years, and this battery, if the rumors are accurate, is the only reason Starlink connectivity makes sense on a phone. The rumored spec is 6,145 milliamp hours. That's significantly larger than anything Apple offers. The iPhone 17 Pro Max sits around 4,600. But here's what matters more than the number, cycle life and total cost of ownership. Tesla doesn't optimize for the thinnest device. They optimize so you keep using it longer and aren't forced to upgrade as often. A powerful phone isn't one that impresses you on day one. It's one that makes you forget where the charger is. Now, some rumors mention aluminum ion battery chemistry. This is important to understand. Aluminum ion technology has potential advantages, better thermal management, faster charge cycles, and longer lifespan compared to lithium ion but it's not mainstream yet. As of late 2024, early 2025, it's still largely in research and development. So treat this as a technical possibility, not a confirmed feature. If Tesla did crack aluminum ion for mass production, that would be genuinely revolutionary. But until we see hard evidence, consider it a hypothesis. What we can talk about with more confidence is charging strategy. Rumors suggest 10 to 80% in roughly 40 minutes. That's not the fastest on paper. Samsung and others can hit faster peak speeds, but Tesla's philosophy has always been about the sweet spot. Charge fast enough to be convenient, but not so aggressively that you degrade the battery in two years. Most people don't need zero to full in 15 minutes if it means replacing the phone sooner. And here's the kicker, a solar charging layer on the back panel. This isn't going to replace your wall charger. It's not designed to. But if you're on a road trip, camping in remote areas, or dealing with a power outage, that thin photovoltaic layer gives you emergency power, enough to make calls, send messages, check maps. It's a survival feature, not a daily charging method. And when you combine a 6100 milliamp hour battery with solar backup, suddenly Starlink connectivity doesn't seem so crazy because now Tesla has the power budget to keep a satellite radio running without killing your phone by noon. But let's get real about what this means in practical terms. Think about your current phone habits. How many times a week do you scramble for a charger? How often does battery anxiety force you to change your plans? Maybe you skip taking photos because you're at 30%. Maybe you avoid using GPS on a long drive because you're not sure you'll make it. With a battery this size, combined with Tesla's energy management software learned from managing millions of electric vehicles, those compromises disappear. You stop thinking about battery percentage. You stop carrying power banks everywhere. You use your phone the way it was meant to be used, as a tool that's always ready when you need it. 
and for people in their 50s and 60s, this isn't a luxury feature. It's about reliability and peace of mind. When you're traveling, when you're dealing with an emergency, when you simply can't afford for your phone to die, that extra capacity isn't impressive, it's essential. This is where Tesla's EV experience gives them an edge Apple and Samsung simply don't have. They understand that battery capacity isn't just about numbers on a spec sheet, it's about building trust with people who depend on their devices every single day. Starlink Reality Check Can satellite internet actually work indoors? This is the most exciting part of the Pi Phone rumor. It's also the most misunderstood. Starlink works beautifully in open environments, rural areas, boats, RVs, places where cell towers don't reach. The satellites orbit at around 340 miles up, providing low-latency, high-speed internet almost anywhere on the planet. But here's the problem nobody talks about. Starlink requires line of sight to the sky. Inside a building, especially in dense urban areas with concrete walls and multiple floors, the signal degrades fast. So when people say the Pi phone will have Starlink, they imagine magic. Pull out your phone indoors, instant satellite internet. That's not how physics works. If Tesla is serious about making this work, they need a system, not just a built-in antenna. The most plausible solution is something I call a window relay or range extender. It's a small device you stick on a window with a clear view of the sky. That device connects to Starlink satellites, then rebroadcasts the signal indoors using a local mesh network. Your phone connects to the relay, not directly to the satellites. This isn't revolutionary technology, it's just smart engineering applied to a real-world physics problem. You're not fighting the laws of radio wave propagation, you're working with them. But here's the question nobody's answering yet. Can you make phone calls like a normal smartphone? Because Starlink is data, not voice. If the Pi phone is going to replace your iPhone or Galaxy, it needs hybrid connectivity. Starlink for remote areas and backup, eSIM or traditional 5G for urban environments and voice calls, and Wi-Fi or mesh networking for indoor coverage the phone would intelligently switch between them based on signal strength and location. You wouldn't even notice, you'd just expect it to work. And that's the sign of good engineering. Now here's the question that's gonna divide people. When Tesla says free Starlink for life, do they mean truly unlimited or do they mean a basic tier with the option to upgrade? Because there's a huge difference between free data for emergencies and free data to replace your home broadband. My guess, if this phone is real, you'll get a baseline data allowance included, maybe enough for maps, messaging, email, light browsing. If you want to stream 4K video or use it as a mobile hotspot, you'll pay for an upgraded plan. That's how Tesla's business model works across the board, give you the core functionality, then offer premium tiers for power users. The question is, would you switch smartphones just for that? Comment below and let me know. Built to Last – Why Tesla Won't Make a Fragile Phone Let's talk about build quality and philosophy. Tesla designs products to last. Their cars are built for 200,000 miles, not a three-year lease cycle. If they're making a phone, expect the same mindset. That means it might be slightly thicker than an iPhone. It might be slightly heavier but the battery will last longer, the frame will feel more solid, and you won't be terrified to use it without a case. For a lot of people over 40, that trade-off is worth it. And if the foldable version is real, that 8-inch display when unfolded isn't just a gimmick, it's about usability for people who don't have perfect vision anymore. Larger text, easier to read emails, better for video calls with family, clearer maps when you're driving. This isn't about impressing your friends, it's about making technology work for you instead of forcing you to adapt to it. And that's exactly the demographic Tesla is targeting. People aged 35 to 60, especially over 55, who are tired of phones that prioritize thinness over functionality. The make or break question, apps and protection from scammers. Here's the part that will make or break the Pi phone apps. 
You can have the best hardware, the most innovative battery, free satellite internet, but if you can't run the apps you use every day, it's a paperweight. Smartphones are won and lost on app ecosystems. Apple knows this, Google knows this, and Tesla better know this too. If Tesla builds a custom operating system from scratch, they have three realistic paths forward. Path 1. Android Compatibility Layer This is the fastest route to market. You'd essentially run Android apps on Tesla's OS without needing Google's Play Store. It's technically complex, but companies like Huawei have done it before. Path 2. Focus on progressive web apps and core essential apps – banking, email, messaging, maps, media streaming. If 90% of what people actually use daily can run as web apps or native Tesla apps, that might be enough for early adopters. Path 3. Deep partnerships with existing ecosystems. Maybe Tesla works with key developers to port their apps directly. Maybe they strike deals with major platforms. This path is slower but gives you better performance. The reality? Tesla would probably use a combination of all three. Launch with Android compatibility to get people in the door, build out web apps and native apps over time, court major developers for optimized versions. But make no mistake, if the app situation isn't solved on day one, this phone will fail, no matter how good the hardware is. Now let's talk security, because this is where Tesla actually has an advantage. If you're building a phone that connects to your car, your home energy system, your solar panels, maybe even a robot in the future, security can't be an afterthought, it has to be foundational. A strong system needs hardware-level encryption keys, sandboxed apps that can't access each other's data, and on-device AI to detect phishing attempts and scam messages in real time. No cloud processing, no data leaving your phone. Everything happens locally. And here's why this matters for you specifically. Scams targeting older adults are exploding. Fake tech support calls, phishing texts pretending to be your bank, emails that look real but steal your information. If Tesla can't protect against these threats better than Apple or Google, then it doesn't deserve to be called a Tesla product. The brand stands for innovation, but it also has to stand for trust. $199. Expensive or cheap? If the battery lasts longer, you don't replace the phone every two years, and connectivity reduces internet bills, total cost over five years could beat buying two flagships. That's how Tesla wins. They change the math of ownership. The Pi phone is still a rumor, but if real, it wins or loses on four things. Battery cycle life, Starlink with indoor solutions, day one apps, and security against scams. Which matters most to you? Comment battery, Starlink, apps, or security. Remember, no pre-order exists anywhere. Official news only comes through this channel. Next video, Tesla's OS and app strategy. How do they convince developers? How do they compete with Apple and Google? That drops in two days. Subscribe and turn on notifications. Hit like if this helped. Share with anyone asking about the Pi phone. Stay sharp, stay skeptical. Don't fall for scams. Goodbye.